Welcome back to the AR-15 Barrel Series. Today, we'll be looking at the Geisley 18-inch SPR barrel that was released about four or five months ago. This barrel was generously loaned to the channel by a subscriber after he put about 400 rounds through it, so a big thank you to him. In this video, we'll first go over the specs, then take a closer look at things on the bench, and after that, we will head to the range and shoot some 30-shot groups. Starting with the specs, the most unique feature about this barrel is Geisley's patented phased array gas system, which uses multiple gas ports with the intent of reducing the recoil impulse. The barrel also has a few other interesting features, including cut rifling instead of the more typical button or cold hammer forged rifling, as well as larger diameter 5 8 by 24 threads as opposed to the more standard half by 28 threads that are more commonly found on AR-15 barrels. Although 5 8 threads seem to be increasingly more common. Other than that, there is nothing too out of the ordinary about this barrel. It's made from 416 stainless steel, has an SPR profile, 1 to 7 inch twist, rifle length gas system, 0 0.750 inch gas block journal, which has dimples for the gas block set screws, and the barrel extension also has M4 feed ramps. And also, Geisley does note that the barrel is engraved as a 223 chambering, but it's rated for full pressure 556 NATO ammo. Moving on to the inspection, we'll start with the weight, and the barrel is coming in at just over 2.5 pounds on my scale, which gives us 0.142 pounds per inch of barrel length, meaning that this barrel has a bit of a heavier profile. Next, we'll check out a few of the exterior dimensions with the micrometer, and the Geisley SPR has a barrel extension diameter that is a little bit smaller than most of the other barrels that I have measured so far, which will make installation a bit easier, but may result in a looser fit with the upper receiver. Here is the gas block journal diameter, which looks pretty good. The clearance with a gas block is around average to slightly better than average compared to the others that I've measured. Next, we'll move into some gauging. First, we will check the gas port size, and all three of the different gas ports accepted a 63 thousandths pin gauge. Next, we'll use the throat erosion gauge, and a reminder that the owner of this barrel put about 400 rounds through it before this, so keep that in mind. Anyway, the throat is getting a 1 on this gauge, which is what I would expect. We'll move on to checking headspace. First, we will start with a Forster 556 Nano minimum headspace gauge and a new stripped JP bolt, and the barrel passes. Next, we have a Forster 223 no-go gauge, and the barrel fails with this gauge and this bolt. And just to double check the gauge and the bolt, here is a BCM barrel that we will use for a reference. And the BCM barrel passes the minimum headspace gauge. And the BCM also passes the 223 no-go gauge. Also, I didn't get it on camera, but the Geisley SPR barrel passed the 223 field gauge, meaning that it is somewhere in the middle for the acceptable headspace range. Next, we'll take a look at the bore with my bore scope that was kindly provided by Teslong. It is the fold and focus model bore scope, which you can find on their website. And if you are interested in one, you can save 10% with my affiliate code PM2025. Also, just a reminder that the owner of the barrel put about 400 rounds through it, and I took the bore scope footage as it came delivered to me without any additional cleaning. So you will see some wear and firing residue. Anyway, here we are starting out at the body of the chamber, and everything looks fine to me. I don't see any obvious defects. And here's a quick spin around the neck of the chamber. And again, everything looks fine here. I don't see any areas of concern. And here is the throat. As mentioned earlier, the barrel does have some rounds through it. So you can see some fouling. And you can also start to see a bit of fire cracking starting to form. But everything looks pretty good at the throat. It looks to be cut evenly. And again, no obvious defects that I can see. Moving on to the cut rifling. Everything looks very well done. Nice and clean and I don't see any issues here. Here's a look at the three gas ports of the phased array gas system. You'll notice that they are fully within the rifling grooves, which is pretty neat. Although the third one is a little bit closer to one side than the other, but I don't think we need to worry about that. And last, here's a look at the crown, and everything looks fine here as well. No obvious issues or areas of concern. Next up, we'll go over the shooting setup and then head to the range. The barrel was fitted into an upper receiver that was supplied by Bad Attitude Department. The handguard is a 15-inch model from Expo Arms, and I use a Psyonix bolt carrier group. The threads were greased, and the barrel nut was torqued to the manufacturer's torque specification. The handguard was fitted with a 3-inch front bag rider. The stock was supported by a rear bag. An A5 buffer system was used with an A5-2 buffer and a Sprintco green spring. No muzzle device is used to prevent possible interference. The trigger was supplied by American Trigger Company, and it is their AR Gold drop-in trigger that features a very clean break, short reset, and it's also drop safe. The bore was fouled with a few rounds before shooting the first group. Scope is a DNT Optics The One 7 35 by 56 with a 34mm main tube, 110 MOA of elevation adjustment, and Japanese XED glass. The DNT Optic is mounted in a reptilian mount 
that was supplied by Danger Space LLC. The mounting clamps were torqued to 45 inch pounds and the rings to 15 inch pounds. Parallax was set using a head nod test. A Garmin Zero C1 Pro chronograph was used to collect velocity data. A Mantis X10 Elite was mounted to the front of the handguard to keep track of rifle stability and detect any possible shooter induced flyers. Groups were measured using the Ballistic X app. Each group is 30 shots fired consecutively over about four minutes. This simulates a match or a practical type scenario where the barrel will get some heat into it, and it will also give us a decent sample size to work with. Between each group, I used a chamber chiller and leaf blower for cooldown. Distance was 100 yards. Point of aim was a small circle at the bottom of the target. Point of impact was set a few inches higher to preserve the aiming point. Wind was monitored with a ribbon, and each 30 shot group took about four minutes to shoot and was edited down to about 15 seconds. Today, I'll be shooting four different groups. First, we'll start with the Federal Gold Medal 77 grain Sierra Match King. Next, we'll move on to Hornady 73 grain ELD Match. Third will be IMI Razor Core 77 grain. And last, just for fun, we'll see what this barrel can do with Winchester M193 55 grain FMJ. And before we get started, for your reference, here is the best 30 shot group that are shot with an Air 15 on video so far. It was with a Sons of Liberty Gunworks SPR barrel shooting a Hornady 73 grain ELD match. All right, with all that out of the way, let's do it. Okay, so the first group we're watching is with the Federal Gold Medal 77 Grain Tier Match King. And I feel like this is a pretty well established premium tier or match grade ammo, whatever you want to call it. So we will see how well I'm able to shoot it with the Geisley SPR. The shooting for this group felt fine on my end. Wind was calm. The Chrono and Mantis captured data on every shot, which is nice. Ejection was nice and consistent at about 3.30 or 4 o'clock. And the recoil felt pretty good. It was definitely on the lighter side. This type of shooting isn't the best way to evaluate recoil but recoil felt more pleasant than average. Anyway, we ended up with a really good looking group. So we will finish up here and then take a closer look. The Federal Gold Medal 77 Grain Steer Match King ended up with an average velocity of 2,586 feet per second, which gives us 1,143 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. And the velocity standard deviation looked pretty decent at 20 feet per second. Looking at the individual velocities for each shot, nothing looked significantly out of place. Rifle stability looked good with an average score of 99.7 and a low score of 99.5 and we ended up with an impressive group. Before going over the group stats, we'll go over my AZ score for the new folks. So AZ stands for A Zone Equivalence Distance and it gives you the maximum distance where the calculated group size would still fit into a USPSA A Zone. The reason why I use this score is because it's easier for me to make sense of the group numbers compared to looking at the raw mean radius numbers. Also, we'll go over shot placement real quick. So with the target camera and video editing software, I am generally able to place each shot on a ballistic X pretty well to get an accurate calculation of the mean radius. But with this group, shots 25 and 29 were a bit of a guess as to where exactly they landed. The target camera didn't really show any good evidence of where those two shots went. So I did the best that I could, but that's just something to keep in mind as we work our way through these numbers. I'm aware that there are various ways to address this issue, and I will continue to make improvements in future videos. Moving along, 30 shot group size ended up at 1.523 MOA with a 30 shot mean radius of 0.366 MOA which gives us an impressive AZ score of 386 yards. Or if you want some more conventional numbers to look at, if we take the 30 shot group and break it down into three 10 shot groups, the best 10 shot group was 0.8 MOA and the average 10 shot group size was 1.2 MOA. And if we compare this to the other groups that I shot with Federal Gold Medal 77 Grand Sierra Match King, the Geisley SPR comes in first place with an AZ score that is eight yards better than the proof research barrel that I shot and 28 yards better than the unrivaled barrel. So an impressive start for the Geisley SPR. Let's see how it goes with the next group. Second group is Horn D 73 grain ELD match. I've had pretty good luck with this load, with it putting up some pretty good groups. So we'll see what I'm able to get with this load and the Geisley SPR. The 73 ELD is do seem to be loaded a little bit lighter, so to me, it feels like this stuff recoils a bit less. The Federal Gold Medal that we just went over is also a pretty light shooting load as well. Anyway, ejection looked nice and consistent again at 3.30 to 4 o'clock. The Garmin got velocity on all the shots, but the Mantis didn't record two shots. Wind was calm again, shooting felt fine on my end, and we end up with a pretty good looking group with one little guy going low and left. Anyway, we will finish up here and then take a closer look. 
The Hornady 73 grain ELD match ended up with an average velocity of 2,615 feet per second, which gives us 1,108 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. And the velocity SDA looked pretty good at 19 feet per second. Rifle stability looked fine with an average score of 99.7 and a low score of 99.4. Shot number 8 was the slowest and shot 29 was the fastest. And we ended up with a pretty solid group, although shot number 24 ended up a bit low left farther away from the rest of the group. Velocity and rifle stability looked fine with that shot. The sight picture looked fine when I, when I broke the shot, but it could have been something with my technique or input into the gun or any other number of variables. So it is what it is. Anyway, we ended up with a 30 shot group size of 2.455 MOA with a 30 shot mean radius of 0.498 MOA and an AZ score of 283 yards. And we break the group down into three 10 shot groups. The best 10 shot group was 1.2 MOA with an average 10 shot group size of 1.4 MOA. And comparing that to the other groups that I've shot with Hornady 73 grain ELD match, the guys that comes in fourth place out of five groups with an AZ score just four yards ahead of the Triarch and 67 yards behind the White Oak Armament in third place. So still a very respectful group for the Geisley, but there have been some very good groups that I've shot with the Hornady 73 grain ELD match with other barrels. So this leaderboard in particular is very competitive. Anyway, in case you were wondering, if we were to exclude shot 24 from the group, which is the one that ended up low and left, the 29 shot group would end up at 1.755 MOA with a mean radius of 0.462 MOA, which would bump up the AZ score about 22 yards to 305 yards. And the guys league would still end up firmly in fourth place on this leaderboard. Anyway, let's move on to the next group. And here is a group for the IMI Razor Core 77 grain. And this group gets a little bit weird and ugly. You'll see what I'm talking about here in a minute. I end up with some stringing from high left to low right, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Anyway, recoil was a bit more than the Federal or Hornady loads. It was still fine. And overall, the recoil still felt relatively soft, but I felt it was more than the Federal or Hornady. Anyway, when it was calm, the Garmin captured all the velocities and the Mantis missed three shots. So we will finish with the group and then take a closer look. The IMI 77 grain Razor Core has an advertised velocity of 2,750 feet per second out of a 20 inch barrel, and the 18 inch Geisley SPR came in with an average velocity of 2,759 feet per second, which gives us 1,301 foot pounds of muzzle energy. So, a pretty unexpectedly high velocity out of the Geisley with this load. Anyway, velocity SD was pretty decent at 19 feet per second with an ES of 71 feet per second. Average rifle stability looked fine with an average score of 99.7 and a low score of 99.3. Nothing looked significantly out of place with the individual velocities. And we end up with a bit of an awkward looking group with some shots stringing up high left and low right and one lonely shot low left. So not entirely sure what's going on here. The velocities and rifle stability look fine. And after shooting the groups on this day, I double checked the torque on all these fasteners and they were all fine. So I don't think it was that either. Obviously, usually the biggest source of error when shooting groups is going to be the shooter, so it certainly could have been me. But in any event, this is a group that I ended up with. 30 shot group size came in at 2.381 MOA with a 30 shot mean radius of 0.618 MOA, which gives us an AZ score of 228 yards. Breaking the group down into groups of 10, the best 10 shot group was 1.4 MOA with an average 10 shot group size of 1.7 MOA. And if we look at the leaderboard for IMI Razor Core, the Geisley SPR comes in a pretty firm fourth place out of nine groups, with an AZ score at 39 yards behind the proof research barrel that came in first place. So a bit of an awkward group, but still a pretty decent placement on the leaderboard. Anyway, let's move on to the last group. Okay, last group. Just for fun, we will see what I can do with the Geisley SPR barrel and Winchester M193. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll notice that your expectations are low for this group. For whatever reason, I've had some pretty poor groups with this ammo. So, we'll see how it goes. I guess you can just think of this as a reminder of how important ammo choice can affect the performance of your rifle. Anyway, I forgot to turn on the Garmin for the first 11 shots, so we'll be missing some chrono data for this one. Ejection looked fine, starting at about 3.30 and then moving up to about 3 o'clock. Recoil felt fine. Shooting felt fine on my end, and we ended up with a pretty decent group for M193. So we will finish up the group and then take a closer look. 
Winchester M193 has an advertised velocity of 3,180 feet per second at a 20 inch barrel, and the 18 inch Geisley SPR had an average velocity of 3,250 feet per second. So, again, an unexpectedly high velocity out of the Geisley SPR barrel with this load. Muzzle energy was 1,290 foot pounds with a velocity SD of 20 feet per second. Rifle stability looked fine with an average score of 99.6 and a low score of 99.3 although the Mantis missed five shots. And again, I forgot to turn on the Garmin for the first 11 shots, so we we're missing some data there as well. The group looks fairly well distributed, with the exception of shot 20, which wandered off high on the left, but otherwise the rest of the group looks to be about three inches tall and three inches wide. 30 shot group size ended up at 4.236 MOA, with a 30 shot mean radius of 0.970 MOA, which gives us an AZ score of 145 yards. And if we break the group down into groups of 10, the best 10 shot group was 2.1 MOA, and the average 10 shot group size was 2.9 MOA. And if we compare this to the other groups that have shot with Winchester M193, the Geisley SPR comes in second place out of nine groups on this leaderboard. Just three yards behind the proof research barrel in first place, and two yards ahead of the unrivaled barrel in third place. So, a pretty good performance with the Geisley SPR barrel. Moving on to the overall results. Of course, keep in mind that I am not a perfect shooter, so all these groups would likely be at least a little bit better. And also, this is my experience with one barrel. Different barrels from the same manufacturer can shoot better or worse sometimes, and this barrel may have performed better or worse with different ammunition. Before we get to the results, I'll make a quick note here for those who might want this information. I ended up shooting these four groups over two different range sessions. For the first range day, I shot Winchester first and Federal Gold Medal second, and then for the second range day, I shot the IMI group and then the Hornady group. Anyway, Federal ended up with the best group by a decent margin, followed by Hornady, IMI, and then Winchester. The velocity SDs were all remarkably similar for all the loads through this barrel, so that was pretty interesting to see. And also, all of the measured velocities were quite a bit higher than what I would have expected out of this barrel. Most notably, the IMI and Winchester M193 velocities out of the Geisley SPR were both higher than the ammo manufacturer's advertised velocities out of 20 inch barrels. The Hornady and Federal loads used 24 inch test barrels for their advertised velocities. So, the velocities out of the Geisley weren't higher than the advertised velocities for Hornady or Federal but they were still higher than I would have expected. And I'll also note that on both range days that I shot this barrel, I also shot another barrel with the same lot of Federal, IMI, and Winchester loads, and also used the same chrono. And with the other barrel, all the velocities were as expected. So I don't think the higher velocities with the Geisley barrel are from the chrono or ammo. I'm guessing it's just something about the barrel that got the higher velocities, but that's just a guess. Anyway, the IMI and Winchester loads had pretty high muzzle energy at around 1,300 foot-pounds, and both the Hornady and Federal loads were a bit lower at 1,108 foot-pounds for the Hornady and 1,143 foot-pounds for the Federal. And that will do it for the Geisley SPR. Again, a big thank you to the subscriber for loaning this out to me. I really appreciate it, and I think that'll do it for now. I'll see you next time. Later.